The new leader of the historic Abyssinian Baptist Church is sitting down for his first interview since being named to the high profile role. Reverend Dr. Kevin Johnson welcomed our Maurice Dubois to Abyssinian's homecoming service. Johnson opened up about his selection process, family and the legendary leaders who paved the way. This is the day that the Lord had made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. As the 21st pastor of Abyssinian Baptist Church, Reverend Dr. Kevin R. Johnson knows the world is watching. We are connected and we're bound together by an indescribable tie that binds us. Being a pastor is no different than being a politician. You gotta earn it. Reverend Johnson, now 50 years old, says he preached his first sermon at the age of 16. And he plans to use the pulpit of this famed story church to spread his message, not just to the faithful, but to political leaders as well. I do want to be a kingmaker. I want to decide who's in the seat so that they, when I call them, that they will listen and make sure they hear what I have to say. Johnson first joined Abyssinian in 1997, along with his wife, Kimya. He was later an assistant pastor and left in 2007 to lead Bright Hope Baptist Church in Philadelphia before starting his own congregation there, Dare to Imagine Church. What do you think made you ready for this moment, this place? I would say life experiences. For me, this was more of a calling. It was coming home. It was to make sure that Abyssinian is prepared for the next generation of service. Founded in 1808, Abyssinian has been led by pastoral giants, Adam Clayton Powell Sr. and Congressman Adam Clayton Powell Jr., as well as Samuel DeWitt Proctor and Calvin Otis Butts III, who died in 2022. I spoke with Reverend Johnson after Abyssinian's homecoming Sunday service. He says he is humbled and ready to lead. God bless you. You doing all right? Good. Good to see you. Hey, bro. Man, good to see you, man. Every time I walk into the space, I feel the spirit of Dr. Butts, Dr. Powell, Dr. Proctor. It's a reminder to me that this is holy ground. This is a sacred place. This is where black culture meets its faith and begins to transform the world. And I have been now blessed with the privilege to not only preach from this place, but also to share a new vision for our church. You were blessed to have a relationship with Dr. Butts. Yes, sir. How do you think that shaped you? Reverend Butts talked a lot about faith, justice, and community service. And for me, that is the essence of what the black church really is. There is definitely no politics like church politics. <laughs> yeah. You know that better than anybody. Yes. Abyssinian is yeah. no exception. There are people who feel that the process that ended with your selection was flawed. There's even a lawsuit charging gender discrimination in that whole process. Yeah. When people come to you with questions about that, what do you tell them? What I can say about the pulpit search committee and the leadership here at Abyssinian and the great members who I want to thank is that everything that they did was done the way it should be done according to the church's bylaws, and I support what they did. Reverend Johnson left Bright Hope in Philadelphia in 2014 under a cloud of controversy after reportedly clashing with some congregants. When people search you up online, yeah. they're going to see this brilliant man graduate at the top of his class at Morehouse. They're also going to see what happened yeah. at Bright Hope in yes, Philadelphia. Sir. They're also going to see that you were disinvited from speaking at your beloved Morehouse, right? After criticizing President Obama. I still spoke, though. Well, but mm -hmm. you were disinvited, but then it made headlines. But they're going to see that you criticized President Obama's economic policies. How do you square that for people? How do you explain that to people? People were strongly behind my pastorate there at Bright Hope. It was the tabloid uh, magazines and newspapers I had nothing to do with and I could not control. As it relates to Morehouse, I spoke. I was on the stage with President Obama. And I never forget during that period is because one of the things that Morehouse teaches you is that you must speak truth to power. Now with President Barack Obama, I was the first person, first clergy person in Pennsylvania to support him. But when I saw that he lacked diversity in his cabinet, I did what I learned from Reverend Butts, what I learned from Dr. Moss, and what I learned from others is that you must speak truth to power, even if the person looks like you. What is your plan for unity here? It's happening on Sundays. People are making their way back. As you saw today, the church was full. But also I began to reach out to people and call people, ask them to make their way back into the church. Personally calling them. 
personally call them. Hey, bro. From New Jersey. Bless you, bro. <laughs> After church service, we walked the streets of Harlem. Reverend Johnson reflected on the moments and the footsteps he follows. Being out in the community, yes. in the neighborhoods like we are right now, how vital, how important is that to you? Listen, you can't be pastor of Abyssinian Baptist Church and not be in a community. Uh, the people got to feel you. Johnson stresses the importance of making those connections. I want to be known as the people's pastor. And what does that mean? How does that translate? I know what you're feeling. I know what you're going through. I'm a father. Uh, I'm a husband. I know the challenges. And the preacher's wife, Kimia, is by his side, along with their son, Miles, a grad student at NYU, daughters, Lena, who's a senior in high school, and Layla, a student at Spelman College in Atlanta. I love my wife, love my children. They're my rock. I would not be able to do what I do in ministry or in life if I didn't have this woman by my side for 27 years. How does Reverend Butt speak to you on an ongoing basis? I feel his presence. There's a picture that's on my wall um, as I walk into the office. It's of my first installation as pastor. And they're laying hands on me and praying over me. And I have this picture and I look at it every day. And I hear him speaking. I hear him saying, Kevin, keep the faith. Reverend Johnson also talked about the importance of having his own family by his side. The Johnsons have three children. Son Miles graduated from Morehouse College and is a grad student at NYU. Daughter Lena is a senior in high school and Layla is a student at Spelman College.